Well, following on from my last video uh, regarding data logging, uh, now that we have a facility on the DC load to connect a USB cable in there for that purpose, what I'm going to do in this short video is go through the software and the procedure for data logging. Now, the Arduino Nano, or the Arduino generally really, the IDE software that comes with that, although you can log the serial data on the screen of your computer, one thing that it doesn't do is allow you to save that as a file and then use it later on a PC for creating a graph or whatever. So that's the reason why we're going to use some different software, which is a freeware package, and I'll go through that with you now. Let's now have a look at the additional software we're going to use for our projects to record and log the data from the DC load. And I'm going to use a piece of software called CoolTerm. Uh, if you go onto the internet and you search for CoolTerm in Google, uh, you should get an option like this on the screen. And then simply click on the CoolTerm uh, website there, which actually belongs to Roger Mayer. So we we'll click on that, and that takes us to his website where there's a, a number of uh, free software applications. And the one we're interested in, as I say, is called CoolTerm. So if we now scroll down, and the first thing you should come to on his list is CoolTerm. You can see it there. And there is a download link to the right there. So if you look for uh, the note that refers to V1. 4.5 for Windows build, that's the one you want, and there's a download link there which is highlighted in blue. So if we just click on that, then brings up a zip file for you to download, so we can uh, just uh, click OK, and that should then save it in our uh, download folder. So if we now go and have a look at the uh, download folder, there you are, you can see we've got uh, cool term in there and uh, the next thing we'll do is we want to unzip that folder so uh, we double click on that and then it comes up with two folders and the one we're interested in is one called cool term win and uh, what I suggest you do is you uh, make a copy of that on your desktop so let's just uh, right click copy and if one is that, and uh, if we then paste that onto the desktop, there we are. So we've now got those uh, that folder with those files in pasted on the desktop. Uh, if you now uh, double click on that, you're then given. Uh, some a, a folder there and some files and the one you want is the application file which is cool term. Now before uh, opening that application, the application is not actually installed on your PC uh, we're just running it on the on the fly there so before we actually start cool term up you want to plug in the USB lead that goes to our DC load so I've just done that and then once the DC load is uh, powered on and the, the uh, USB lead is connected to the PC we double click on cool term cool term will then open up if you try to do it prior to having the DC load connected via the USB lead you may get an error so you need to have it connected first um, what you then get is a window just uh, enlarge that and the next thing to do is to set that up so the first thing I want to do is uh, go to options and the first thing we're looking at is the serial port uh, you can see here it's connected to serial port 5 if you do the download you've got two ports there but the one that so the DC loss connected is COM5 you may need to just make sure you select the correct one on your PC and then just ensure that the board rate is set at 9600. I think it defaults to 9600. Now everything else on this uh, window here, we just leave set as default and then simply click OK. Uh, we're not going to uh, alter the other options there. We've got terminal, we've got receive, transmit 
and this lane, yes. Uh, we're just going to leave all the default settings set and then simply click OK. The next thing we do is we go to the connections, to the drop down list there, and what we want to do is go down to capture to text file because not only do we want to uh, view the uh, data um, live as it's happening, we also want it to log it into a text file so we can use that later. So we're going to click start and then it asks you for a file name. It actually gives you a file name by default which is uh, just using cool term capture, gives the date and uh, the timestamp there. You can keep that if you wish or you can put your own uh, file name. I mean let me just push that out and we put say BAT1 as our file name and uh, I've already got a folder set up on my PC called DC Load Data Files and uh, we simply then click Save and what it's going to do now is going to save the data as it receives it into that text file so we can use it later. Now with the DC load connected to the PC with the USB cable uh, we're now going to go through data logging in the battery capacity mode and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to select uh, battery capacity mode. Before I do that I'm going to make sure we've got a connection now between the DC load and the PC and you go up to this box here, the connect box and you click on that and that starts up the connection and what you'll notice there is it also resets the DC load so that's the, it resets the Arduino on the DC load as it makes that connection so best to do that connection first before you go into battery mode so we now select uh, battery mode and I'm going to select uh, LiPo and we're going to set the current to 1 amp and you'll see at the moment I've got the power supply simulating a battery its voltage is uh, 4.2 volt and what I'm going to do is uh, when I now switch the DC load on what you'll see on the screen in cool term is that data being displayed live so uh, let me now just uh, switch the load on so the data as you can see now on the screen there is now showing it live the first column is the time in seconds and the second column you see there is actually the voltage so it's uh, displaying the voltage at the moment of 4.21 I'm now going to gradually take that voltage down the power supply to simulate the battery uh, discharging. So taking it down slowly. And when it gets to 3 volts it should cut out. So it's just cut out, just gone below 3 volts, it's cut out. And uh, it also stops the data now being collected there on the uh, screen. So that's the uh, data that we've logged. As well as viewing it on the screen, it's now saved that in that text file that we previously named BAT1. And just to prove that point, let me go to that folder. and there you can see the text file that's been uh, saving that data which we can then use later in a spreadsheet package to draw a graph let me just double click on that text file just to view it and there you can see it, that's the data that is now saved in that text file so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, view that data in an Excel spreadsheet and then uh, view it as a graph. Right, well, we're now going to use that uh, text file of uh, data logging that we made in a spreadsheet package. I'm using uh, Microsoft Excel uh, but you may have uh, different versions of a spreadsheet but equally you can do the same thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the uh, text file that uh, 
was saved in cool terms so we're going to click on open and it was in the PC load folder uh, now you'll see there we've got no files being displayed and the reason behind that is you'll see there that it's saying that uh, all Excel files but this wasn't an Excel file it was a text file so we need to click on that download box there and select all files and then what you see is that text file so you can see the BAT1 text file that was created when we logged that data so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to open that uh, file now because I've still got cool term open at the moment uh, it's only letting me view that as a read only file that's fine so I'm going to click read only and then it's asking what to do because it recognizes that there's actually text there that's separated by a comma so we're going to use the delimited feature and it's going to separate those into two columns on the spreadsheet so the delimited uh, feature is selected there and let's press next and we used a comma to separate those two so we're going to click the comma box there and that's going to separate them into two columns on the spreadsheet as it imports it in and then click next that's going to show you how it's going to be displayed and then click finish and you can see there that it's imported that uh, text file data into this spreadsheet now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a graph from that just have a quick look go down you can see towards the bottom of that uh, data uh, the voltage was going down and then uh, I must have did that on the control it went up a little bit there again but we'll see that on the graph anyway so let's uh, first of all select all that uh, data where we can use the click on it with the mouse hold the mouse button down and highlight all of that data and having highlighted that data we're now going to click on insert and we're going to go for uh, the scatter graph that's the uh, that actually plots a graph for x and y coordinates because we want the uh, the time and the voltage to be on the x and y split between the x and y coordinates so click on that I'm going to do straight line and there you can see it's created that graph you can see it's running along there at uh, 4.2 volts and then you can see it coming down there's that uh, peak there that we got when I uh, accidentally just nudged the control and it went up again so uh, that gives you the uh, trend of that uh, voltage from the uh, DC load and uh, we can use that later and analyze it later obviously if you're doing a proper LiPo battery discharge that's going to go on for a much longer period of time so you'll get more data there so that's uh, one of the options that we now have not only to record and save the data from our DC load and then to use a spreadsheet package to create a graph and uh, then print that off or just, or just uh, display it. Well I hope you found this uh, short video on the data logging procedure and the software of interest. Um, what we may do at a later stage is uh, have a look at other options regarding data logging and uh, we, I mean we could even look at uh, maybe having some facility for putting a, a USB stick on or a, a memory card of some type. Uh, the only problem with that is that we need more memory in the Arduino Nano and I think we're getting to the maximum capacity of uh, the amount of memory we've used so far. So we've got some restrictions there. But that's for the future. Uh, for the time being, uh, at least you can now log your data in the battery capacity mode. Maybe we, at a later date by upgrades on software we can uh, do it in other modes if you wish. But I'm going to leave it there for today. So if you found this short video on the data logging procedure in the software, please give me the usual thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon next time. Bye for now.